Hi, and welcome to Mods. We're keeping you connected to inspiring science with virtual camp discovery brought to you by Citrix, the museum's official innovation partner. The boy who harnessed the wind tells the fascinating story of a young boy in Africa who built a windmill to help his family and his village. Then you can harness the wind by creating a pinwheel out of household items. Storytime is powered by PNC Grow Up Great. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kumquamba and Brian Mueller. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed, and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where's the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room, as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beings, then wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does its engine make it go? Pay attention to where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot! For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Soon William's father had gathered the children and said, from now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. In the evening, they sat around the lantern and ate their handfuls watching hungry people pass like spirits along the road. Money also disappeared with the rain. Pepani, his father said, I'm sorry, you will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the side of the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks, he soaked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radials pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine, taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan, a giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic? Slowly, he built the sentence. Windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green, even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered. This windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Magetsia mefipo, magetsia mefipo, he whispered. I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, Pieces appeared like rusted treasure in the tall grass. A tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tunga, he'd shout to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, this boy is masala. Only crazy people play with trash.
After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt. A broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps, and plastic pipe. Even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered, while chickens squawked and dogs barked, and neighbors shook their heads saying, what's Misala doing now? His cousin Jeffrey and best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Mulibuanji, they greeted. Can we help with electric wind? Grab your pangas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together they swung their sharp blades into the trunk of a blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, bring it up, while the boys tugged and heaved. A crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always, it came. First a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades spun round. With sore hands once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I've made electric wind. Wakita Bueno, a man yelled, well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Megatsia Mepipo, electric wind can feed my country, William thought. And that was the strongest magic of all. The end. So we just finished reading The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind that was based on a true story about a boy named William in Malawi, Africa that built his own windmill to bring power and water to his, his village. Now, the cool thing about this story is because it's a true story, those are real struggles that people in Africa face. You see, in Africa, they don't always have clean water, energy, or access to education the way we do. So what Mr. William decided to do is he read a book and he discovered that he can use engineering to make his own energy to help his village. And what he made was a beautiful windmill. What happens in Africa is they're looking into new renewable resources they can use to power the country, such as the wind or solar powered energy. Now the cool thing is based on that, we are going to build our very own pinwheel to harness the power of the wind. So for today's craft, all you're going to need is a good piece of cardstock paper, make it nice and sturdy, so we have shape to our blades, some markers for coloring, a thumbtack to hold our blades in place, some scissors, and a wooden dowel. Now, if you don't have a wooden dowel, this can also be alternatively used as a pencil. So first things first, what we're going to do with our cardstock is we're going to turn it horizontal like this, and we're going to draw lines from each corner about midway to the center. Don't connect in the middle. After we do that, this is going to be our pinwheel blades. After that, we're going to take our scissors and we are going to gently cut all the way. Make sure you're not meeting towards the center. You want to leave space because we are going to be folding these edges. Kids, make sure you have your parents helping you so you don't get hurt. And some of these things might be a little more difficult. I'm going to cut it so. so. All right. After you cut it, you should have a bunch of flimsy pieces, like so. Now for the next step, we're going to take one corner each and we're going to fold it towards the center 
just like that. And you repeat that on every single side. Alternating sides, so Jen is not touching. Like that, like that. Now that you have all edges folded, you should have the center like this, and the outside should look a little something like this. Now that we have our blades ready, it's time to stick a pin through it. Now, we wanna make sure you have adult help to do this so you don't hurt your fingers. And the best advice is probably to try to make a hole in your dowel first. Make sure it's nice and narrow so you have a nice good spot to push your pin in. And you're going to put the pin right in the center of all your folds here. So once you put it in, watch your fingers on the other side. Make sure it goes through all the flaps. Like so, so it should come through like that. And now we push it through our dowel. Right there. Just like so. Use your imagination. Now that you have your beautiful windmill, now you get to color it whatever way you want. Mr. William had to use all sorts of scrap pieces to make his, but you get to use all sorts of colorful markers to make your masterpiece. You can either keep at home or stick right outside to catch the wind. And that's it. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I hope you learned a little bit about some engineering and we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you for joining us for Virtual Camp Discovery. This series is brought to you by Citrix, Mod's official innovation partner. Storytime is powered by PNC Grow Up Great. Please stay safe and connected with Mod's by visiting our social channels at MODSFTL.